So what we want to do is deferrals and accruals today, okay? Everything is not cash, right guys? Do any of you ever work and not get paid the same day you work? Yeah, right? You might get paid later, right? It's tough, yeah. So, uh, does anybody work and get paid in advance? I've done that. Oh, and it's kind of annoying to have to do the work during the money you already got, but still, it's not that annoying. Uh, yeah, you don't necessarily get paid cash at the same time as you deliver goods or services. Does that make sense, guys? When you sell things, you might not get paid at the same time. What are the three distinct periods of time you might get paid, do you think? One would be cash at the same time. What else are the other two possibilities? How about before? How about after? That's it. Okay, when, I, when I'm paying for a service that I receive, the expense that I'm using up, right? I pay for a service that I, that I receive, what's that going to do? I could do it at the same time, or I could do it before, or I could do it after. That's all there is. It's the only time period there are. If you can have to do those six things, right? And of those six things, you get a chance for anything. Wow. This is really powerful, guys. You already know a few things here, don't you? Okay, you know. A synonym for left is debit. We're going to use these. You know a synonym for right is? You know there are only five types of accounts, which are? And that's the balance sheet, right, guys? Okay. And you know, by the way, you're welcome for all these three points. There won't be any three points from here on out. But that's okay. we got things going, right? Get it going. Oh, by the way. Some of you did not get a score you liked. Forget about what your score is and learn new stuff. That's what you do. We probably have some people sitting here who are freshmen who have a 4.0 GPA coming into development and think they're going to be a 4.0 all the way through their PhD program, and you're probably wrong. This one might still be an A, but somebody else is. Okay? It's a competitive world. It's hard. We don't give away grades. You don't know. Okay? So if you didn't get what you want, Dig in and do more. And if you don't end up at the end of the semester with an A, so what? Big deal. What if you get a really good job and you graduate and have a fantastic career and you were only a three A? Or if you're a three two, no matter. Big deal, doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Nobody has ever asked me what my GPA was in my PhD program. No one ever. They actually put grade in the class because I don't care what happens if I did or not. It was meaningful. Nobody cares. Everybody thinks you're just doing it. So anyway, relax about it. Grades are not everything. Now, I'm not saying go ahead and get C's and everything, graduate, and have a double time job. No, don't do that. Do the best you can, but relax about it. Learn the stuff, okay? Just learn the stuff. Anyway, what are the other two accounts? And the difference is net income, but that's not an account. Everybody knows what they're doing. Okay, how do you increase that first? Because they're on the left. How do you reduce them? Liabilities and equity are both on the right. How do you increase both? How do you reduce them? Revenues is a subset of equity, right, guys? So how do you increase equity? With a credit. Revenues increase equity. So what are they? If you put too much in, what do you do? Cover it. Take it out. Expenses need to be the opposite, and expenses reduce your wealth, okay? It reduces your income. So they must be what? Increase with a debit. What if you put too much in? Credit. Everybody got it? Okay. And then net income, is that a debit or a credit? Positive net income. It's a credit because revenues would be bigger than expenses. That's what net income is, right, guys? So those total credits and revenues would be bigger than the total expenses. You got it, right? Well, very good. What is the net loss? It'd be a debit. Why? Expenses are bigger than revenues. Debits are bigger than credits. That's it. That's it. We're not walking away from this model now. You guys know it. You're going to use it, okay? And if you just relax now when we cover this deferrals and accruals stuff here, Okay? Have you read chapter 4 yet? No? I'm going to read chapter 4. The next time we meet, okay? Uh huh. I'm talking about a chapter before you read it. I'm not kidding. That's because it's really hard. Okay? Really hard to get your head around. I'd like you to see this model and see that it's just a continuation of what we're doing. Okay? Continuation of what you already knew for this first quiz. Okay? And by the way, what if you didn't know it for the first quiz as well as you wanted to? Will it be helpful to really get it down now? for the next quiz and for the first test. And that first test is going to start determining the grade, right? 
we're going to be in 130 points even if you throw away one of the two quitters, right? So 130 by 650 is, you know, it's significant, isn't it? Okay, or 160, however you want to look at it. So relax and go out, okay? Relax and dig in and go out. It'll be just fine. Okay, most of these are pretty good, by the way. So, all right, here we go. I want to do an example. I mean, let's make this be a service business so there's no cost to this building, okay? We're not selling a product, we're selling a service. Sound good? Yeah, so. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we are going to do cash now. That sound good? For both selling and buying, okay? Selling services, buying services. If I buy a service, I'm going to use it up with the time. Anytime I use up something, what does it become? Everything I use up trying to generate my revenues is just what? Expense. All the costs I'm incurred generating my revenues and expense, right guys? Okay. Come on, I know you had a holiday and uh, you came back yesterday, didn't you? Don't you guys have classes yesterday? You should y'all pop that right now. Come on. Check it out. If you need to bring caffeine with you to class, that's just fine. Exactly in the front end. Exactly in the front end. If you need if you want to make lunch with you, I don't care. Just have your head into it, okay? Just cook a couple of it, but this is fun. It's what you want to do. Yes. Okay? Must be fun. I got fun, are you? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, sorry. It's not too bad for you. Okay, anyway, so we're gonna use that stuff, right? Everybody's got that written down. You know about it, okay? So here we go. Let's do let's do wanna do revenues first? Okay. So let's start with revenues. That'll be fun, huh? Okay, what are the three different distinct periods of time that you could get paid when you earn revenue? Okay. Once before, so cash, cash before, that's one, right? What else is there? Cash at the same time, cash now, I could say, right? Okay, and we'll expand that a little bit more to what we're talking about. Cash before and cash after or later. Everybody got it? Okay, if we knew how to handle those, we can handle any type of revenue that's going on, huh? Okay, so let's say that I am a gardening firm, huh? I mow lawns, right? I'm mowing lawns for Papa John's at their headquarters, and I charge them, I don't know, I charge them $1,000 a month to mow their lawn. They have a lot of grass. Okay, I charge them $1,000 a month, okay, to mow their grass. So I mow the grass in June. It's now the end of June. I go to their office and I hand them an invoice, a bill, right, for a thousand dollars for work I did in June, and they immediately hand me cash. By the way, do you think that's how this would happen? No. You walk into Papa John's head office and ask them for cash, hand them an invoice, you think you're nuts. You mail them the invoice and they wire the funds into your account, right? Transfer the money from their bank to your bank. That's how it's really done. Or if you want a check, they'll drop a check and send it to you. But that's a different way of doing business than we're going to do here, right? Okay, and we are going to do it. That's what we tap later. But cash now would be you hand the bill and get the money. There, we do transact business that way. You go to McDonald's, that's what you do, right? You give them the cash and they give you the food at exactly the same time. So, you know, there are cash transactions, lots of them. Okay, cool, do the same thing. You hand them the cash, they give you whatever you buy. Okay, anyway, so cash now, it's June 30th. What would you do? Tell me what the entries are. What'd you get? Which is a. And you have more or less of it. So what do you do to it? Seeing as an asset, and you have more debit. Don't lose the model, guys. It works really good, huh? So what we're going to do is debit cash. How much? Thousand bucks, they said. And it's in the same month, right? I earned it in the month I got the cash. So I debit cash and I credit what? Let's see. I'm doing gardening for them. Why do I do gardening? That's how I earn my revenues, right, guys? And I'm going to have all my expenses against it, right? It's, I'm not going to really earn the whole thousand. I have to pay people to mow the lawn, and I have to pay for the fuel, and I have to pay for the lawn mower. Right, guys? And all my taxes and insurance, all that stuff, right? So I don't get to keep the whole thousand. Maybe I get to keep a hundred of it. That'd be good. Maybe I get to keep, keep 50 of it. I'm not kidding, right? Okay? So, but, you know, I have covered all these expenses, right? And I still made a profit, we hope. Okay? So what am I going to credit? What did I, what did I do? I earned revenue. Will you just write the word revenue? That's not enough, is it? Because there's millions of kinds of revenue. So what will you probably do? Well, it's not cash revenue, right? You could put cash in if you want, but you'd have to add more than cash to it. If you want to separate credit revenue from cash revenue, you could. 
most people don't buy. Some sort of service revenue. But there are all kinds of services too, so what would be a really good idea with that? How about calling it gardening service revenue? Or just gardening revenue. You like that? Call things what they are. Okay? So I think I would call this gardening service. Looks like hearts. They were good this week, didn't they? We got a quarter back. Oregon was good too, but they played a high school, so, you know. Too many. I told you that already. Really, really sad schedule. Michigan State next time. A little different. Debit, cash, and credit, gardening service revenue. Notice I put the credit to the right. That's the description and the number, right? Same thing on, on the cash. Okay. All right, guys. We're done with that transaction. It's over, right? What did I do to my financial statements? Can you tell me what I did to my financial statements there? What happened to my assets? They went up by a thousand. What happened to my revenue? Went up by a thousand. What happened to my liability? Nothing. There's no liability in the journal entry. Nothing. Right? What happened to my equity? Be careful. If assets went up by a thousand, what has to happen to equity? Went up by a thousand if liabilities didn't change. How did it go up by a thousand? You increased your revenue, which did what? Increase your net income, which increases your retained earnings. Yeah, we're there, aren't we? Right? For sure. Right? The revenue went up, the net income went up, right? The equity went up, the assets went up. What happened to expenses, by the way? There's no expense in the journal entry. What happened to expenses? Nothing. Can you answer these questions for me when I start answering that kind of stuff? How could you not, right? You really get your head around it. So you really understand. All right, let's do cash before. Now, cash before is going to be a little different because I get the money in some month before June. So let's say that for some reason, Papa John pays for their lawn mowing in advance. By the way, do you pay for any services you get in advance? Which one? Insurance, yes. Yeah, they're powerful, you're not. They won't give you insurance, right? Unless you pay them in advance. And here's another thing. After you realize you don't need the insurance, are you willing to pay for it? No. So they have to collect it in advance. One of the ways insurance companies make their money, which is probably the biggest source of their profit, is they take our money, invest it in the stock market, and earn with it and get a piece back. Right? And then they provide us with insurance coverage. When it, when it's a bad year and the stock market goes down, you want to hear the insurance company. Because they lost money. Uh, well, I mean, not good, huh? Yes. Uh, hey, hey, I didn't know about uh, that I was helping out with my father's business. Uh, he paid for his uh, full service uh, three months in advance. There you go. Three months full service. Yeah, it might just be convenient for him, right? People I don't trust have to pay in advance, too. I've done that before. Taking a CPA. If they already stiffened me once, not paid me for something, right? And I'm doing business with similar organizations and all the same relationships. I, I want my money up front. So I have one client where they gave me ten thousand dollars in exchange for ten thousand and he felt they had to give me another ten thousand or I wouldn't work with them. So yeah, you get that too. Okay. So it's all right. You can get paid in advance. Alpha McDonald's probably started to tax at the time that they gave you the money. Because as soon as you eat it, you know you're ill, right? Or you're fat, but you know you're ill, and you wouldn't pay for it, right? But you want it before you have the drug, right? So, question. I just wanted to check if you're using the new YouTube page, right? Is that following the rest? Okay, now I, that's where I'm renting it, right? I got prepaid rent. Now, that, that's going to be cash before when I'm paying for it in advance. What's it going to become, though, if I pay the rent now? That'll be prepaid rent, but what does it become when I use it up? Not rent revenue, what would it be? Rent. Rent I used up. I rent a building, a piece of equipment, right? I pay in advance, I have prepaid. We're going to do it in a few minutes. That's a great question, right? What does it become when I use it up, though? It's an asset I'm buying when I'm going to use it up. What am I using my building for? It's my store, maybe, and all my inventory is there. My customers are coming in and buying stuff. Oh, that's how I earn revenue. So that rent is what for me? Spent, yeah, you got it, okay? So we're on the other side of the deal. This isn't gonna be a prepay, right? What's it going to be? Well, let's see. Let's say they, that um, Papa John's gives this lawn mowing outfit, this gardening outfit, on May 30th. They pay them for the month of June, got it? Okay, so I get the month in advance. 
Okay, what, what, what happens to the gardening output? Remember, this is XYZ gardening or somebody, okay, like that. Some company, right? XYZ gardening, okay? They're, they receive the cash, don't they? And they receive it in May, don't they? So what will you do? You don't have any revenue, but first is the cash. You have an asset, more of it, debit. Same as this one, right? I debited cash here when I got it. What am I going to do here when I get cash? Debit cash, of course, right? And you're absolutely right. The credit goes to unearned revenue. And in fact, we'd probably call it unearned gardening revenue. Wouldn't that be clever? You like that? Because it's gardening, okay? Unearned revenue. What kind of an account is unearned revenue? Let's see. They gave me cash and I gave them nothing. Oh, I actually did give them something. It's a liability, and what do I owe them? I'm not giving them money back. I owe them services, I owe them the work. So a liability can be services you haven't performed yet, but you owe them the services. That sound good? That one's not real familiar to us because we're not insurance companies, right? If you're an insurance company, you have a lot of stuff, right? You've got to cash and credit under an insurance premium. You like that? It's under revenue for them until they earn it. Okay? Sound good, guys? You bet. The liability. Why? I owe them, right? Either you have to do the work for them or give them the money back. It's a liability, right? Okay, good, good. All right. What did that do? Let's try this one on what it did to the accounting equation over here. The balance sheet and income statement, obviously, is what the accounting equation is. What did that do, you guys? Okay, that, that transaction increased assets, cash by 1,000. What else happened? Increased liabilities. Did we stay in balance? Yes. Did, do we have a revenue yet? No, we didn't earn it. Do we have an expense? Of course not. It's not going to have anything to do with expenses. Do we have any net income then? Of course not. Do we have a change in equity then? Of course not. Everybody see it? Okay. All right. It's just what happened. Why do, by the way, why do we bother with that? Because I'm doing a financial statement in May 31st. And I want to show the cash on my financial statement, but I don't want to show the revenue yet. Does that make sense? I'm going to show the cash coming in on my balance sheet, but I don't want to show the revenue until I earn it. I'd be overstating my income. Got it? So I'm going to show the cash come in as a more asset, and I'm going to show more liability. Everybody good? This isn't bad, is it? Okay. Then what happens in June? What they do in June? They, yeah, they mow the lawn, right? Over and over, right? Okay. So they provided the services. If they provided the services, what did they do? Why did they provide the services? To earn revenue. So do I have more revenue because I provided the services? Sure. Up here when I provided the services, I credited guardian service revenue. Everybody agree with that one? What, what should I do now when I provide the services? Credit what? Gardening service, no, credit what? Credit what? When I earned revenue here, I credited gardening service revenue. What do you want to do here when you earn revenue? Exactly the same thing. You're earning the revenue. It doesn't have anything to do with when you get paid. Everybody hear that? You earn the revenue when you earn it, in this case, mowing the lawn, not when you get paid. It doesn't matter if you get paid at the same time, you get paid in advance, or you get paid later. You earned the revenue when you did the work. Got it? When you deliver the goods and services. Everybody getting this point? Separate cash from earning. I didn't earn the money when I got the cash. I earned the money when I did the work. Got it? Okay? You don't get paid at the same time. Actually, you do college professor, we get paid in the band too. We do, we do, every month, put it in the bank. Yeah, I don't know. Same thing. You don't get paid much, you get paid the best. Okay, anyway, June 30th, what do we do? Credit, gardening, service, revenue. Same one as this one is, right? Gardening, service, revenue. How much? That's well, $1,000, I now earned it. Notice that entry here is the same as that entry here. That's because it's the same thing. You're in the revenue by mowing the lawn. But this time I'm not going to debit cash. They're not going to pay me twice. They already paid me. We debited cash last time. Right? What am I going to debit? I, no, I don't have a thousand of expense. I'm just flailing around back there. Okay? Don't do that. Okay? Who's talking about it? Right? That doesn't make any sense, right? You don't have a thousand of expense. You, you, know, you, you didn't incur any cost. What do we got? Yes, I owed them the liability, unearned revenue with what? I owed them lawn mowing, and I did the lawn mowing, and now I don't owe it to them. So what do you want to do? Get rid of it. So I earn it, 
when I earn it, I credit gardening service revenue, and I no longer have a liability. How do you do reduce liability for all of us? With a debit. Yeah, this model's working so good, isn't it, guys? We are going to get rid of this liability. How do you get rid of it? Debit it. What's the name of it? It's gardening service revenue, or unearned gardening revenue, sorry. Unearned gardening revenue. Does everybody see what happened here? I put it in there, and now I'm taking it out. Well, yeah. They gave you cash. You gave them nothing. You owe them gardening, right? Now you give them gardening. Are we good? This is just making sense. Now, here's where you break from memorizing stuff and thinking about it. Could you memorize these entries? Sure. But how many times have I earned revenue? Oh, my God. It's almost 10 times, right? How many times have revenue? Now, you guys don't know what kind of cash it is. But are, are, are you kind of with me on this? Right? So understand, and then it's easy. It could be gardening, it could be rent, it could be insurance, it could be in, you name it, any kind of revenue you might have earned. Everybody good? Okay? So get the idea, and then all you gotta do is change the, the descriptive adjective, right? And one word. Okay? Fantastic. Well, what is this entry? The, this first entry we said increased assets and increased liabilities. Increased assets, increased liabilities, right? What does this entry do? What does a debit to unearned revenue do? Decreases liabilities by exactly the same amount that you had increased it. It's gone now, isn't it? Everybody see those two entries cancel out? That credit to unearned revenue here is canceled out by this debit to unearned revenue. It's gone. Right? Okay. And then what does this credit to, uh, to gardening revenue do for me? Increases revenues, which gives me what? More net income, which gives me what? higher equity. Isn't that exactly what happened up here? It is, isn't it? You increased your assets a thousand dollars and you increased your equity a thousand dollars because you increased your revenue and therefore your net income by a thousand. So again, why would we bother with doing two journal entries when one would have done it? Right? Because at the end of May, I want to show the cash on my balance sheet, but I don't yet want to show the revenue on my income statement because I didn't earn it yet. You can do the work. So I'm going to show the liability on earned revenue, right? On my balance sheet. Then what's the case at the end of June? I no longer have the liability, so I take it off my balance sheet. What do I have instead? Revenue, more net income, and more equity. Boom. Everybody got it? All right, what's the other possibility? Cash later. So we've done cash now. We've done cash before. Let's do cash later. What do you think that's going to look like, gang? So this time, I do the work in June, and I have a deal with them where I send them an invoice, which is how most business-to-business -business things work, right? I do the work, I send them the invoice, and they have 10 days to pay me, and they pay me because I'm a small business, and I like to get paid fast, and, and probably to unpaid pay fine, right? So they're paying us July 10th, right? I do the work in June, they pay me July 10th. What happens in June because I did the work? Everybody, what do I have if I did the work? Why do I do the work? During revenues, you're risky, right? I'm more than income. Okay? So what's the deal? I did the work, so I have earned the revenue. So what do you want to do? How about record the revenue? How do you record revenue? Always. With a credit, right guys? Okay? What's, what are we going to call the revenue, same as this gardening services we just provided? Gardening services, same as these two, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we're getting there. Gardening service revenue. How much? Thousand bucks, okay, good. And what do you want to debit for a thousand, seeing as they gave you nothing? Well, actually, they did give you something. They gave you what? Their promise to pay, right? They promised to pay them. And it's Papa John. Can they afford to pay you? Yeah, I think they're okay, right? So, what would you do here? Yes, it's on open account. That if I don't have to sign a note, it's on open account. I count and it's receivable because it's owed to me, which is what kind of an account? An asset. Do I have more or less if they owe me more? I have more of an asset. How do you increase assets all? Debit. Excellent. Debit accounts receivable. Everybody got it? What did that just do? Whoops. I put it in the wrong place, didn't I? Did you notice that? Is that what you guys were talking about? Good. Come on, Steve. Yeah, that wouldn't work very well if I waited until July to record it, would it? Sorry. 
old see where they came out. Sorry about that. Okay, everybody got it? So what does this do to the accounting equation, right? It would be in June, right, guys? We do the mowing in, in June. So at the end of June, we report the budget, okay? We report the receiver. Follow the rest of that. What does this do? Increased assets. You got it. I'm increasing my assets. That's what that debit to receiver flows for, right? What else did I do? Increase my revenue, which increases my net income, which increases my equity. See how easy this gets after a while? You just boom, 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 right? Okay? Good deal. All right. So, what happens on July 10th? Of course. They pay me. What did they give me? Which is an asset. I have more. What do you do? Debit it. <laughs> you got a 50 of each other. Yeah, okay. Debit it, right? Increasing the assets. Assets are in the left. Debit. Increase. Okay, there we go. And credit what, guys? Accounts receivable, because they no longer owe me if they paid me. Keep your common sense. Account receivable is a what? Asset. And you have less because they paid you, right? So how do you reduce assets? Good. Yeah. And can you see that these two just offset each other? Right? Okay, so what does that do to the accounting equation? What does this transaction over here, this debit, cash, credit, accounts receivable, what does it do? Uh, no revenue. Debit, debit, cash, and credit accounts receivable. Where did the revenue come from? Over here, right? We already recorded the revenue last month when we earned it. This month they're giving me the cash so I no longer have the receivable. I just created assets, right? I have cash instead of the receivable. I like that, by the way. And I'm going to show that on my balance sheet now that it's cash instead of receivables. Okay? But what happens? Cash is an asset that goes up, and accounts receivable is an asset that goes down. Right? Those two just cancel each other out. Making sense? And why would I want to do this at June 30th? I want to show this, the revenue on my income statement, don't I? Because I earned it. I want to show the net income. I want to show the increase in wealth, the equity. And, but can I put cash on my balance sheet if I don't have it? Of course not. What do I put on instead? Accounts receivable. Right? Then what do you want to do at the end of July? Take the receivable off because they don't owe it to me anymore, right? Out of the assets and put in the cash. That's it. Are we good? We're just getting piece by piece by piece. Just keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking. Okay? All right, gang. Well, let's try then exactly the same thing on expenses. Okay? All right? What are the possibilities for expenses? We could have cash now, cash before or in advance or whatever you want to call it, and we could have cash later. These are going to be the mirror image of what we just did with the revenue, only now it's expenses. So now I'm Papa John's, huh? I'm doing Papa John's books now. Okay, what did I say, June? They mowed the lawn in June. So what do you want to do in June? They mowed the lawn in June. You pay them because you had the lawn mowed for you. So what do you do? Cash. It's an asset. You have less. What do you want to do? <laughs> How can we all become less people and do the same? And it all be cut a little bit. I think I just kind of make those things all the time. Okay, so credit cash, right? A thousand. Get a what? Receipt. They mowed the lawn for me, and immediately after they mowed the lawn, it starts to run. Thank for that. By the way, why do I have the lawn here? I'm talking about it. I don't know if you So let's have a talk to the business. So they know your banker comes there. Keep the city off your back, right? You want it to look beautiful. Let's say it was a doctor's office, and it's janitorial services, and they never clean it. That way. And you walk in the door and there's stuff this thick on the floor. And not to mention everything else that they throw away and pile on the trash can. How many are you gonna even stay that one visit? Nope, they'd have no revenue, right? Why do they have janitorial services? They want patients. They want the revenues, right? And really? Right? Why does Papa John's have the lawn mode? To generate more revenue. That's the only reason, right? Really? Have you ever seen their guy? Anybody visited Papa John's like this? You ever go out there and visit? It's really dull time for Buffalo. It's for business and for other areas. Right? You ought to go out and see it. It's really nice. We do it 
nice to work the executives of meet with you and talk with you. Cool. It's a great place to have an internship, by the way. Top of the line. Way to do real work. And you pay pretty well. So okay, anyway, so what is this for them? If they if they if they're doing this to generate revenues, what is that? Gardening what? Yeah, you could say gardening service expense or just gardening expense. Okay? It's just fine. More often just gardening expense. Good deal. What did that do to the accounting equation, you guys? Balance sheet income statement, in other words. Everybody's got the idea of the accounting equation is just the representation of balance sheet and income statement, right? Gardening expense. What does the debtor do? Increases expenses. Okay? What does that do to net income? Decreases. What does that do to equity? Decreases. Okay, what else happened? That's that one. Assets decrease. Are we in balance? You bet. Everything's good, huh? Transaction's done. Okay, let's do cash before now. Okay. What's that going to be? I said May 30th, right? Papa John pays for in advance. Now, bring lady over here. You had, you, you said there was something going on when things were paid for in advance, and we said not done in revenue for sales. But what if it's a expense you're going to incur? And I paid in advance. What is it? I paid in advance, so it's an asset named prepaid. What do you want to call this prepaid? If you pay insurance in advance, it's prepaid insurance. If you pay rent in advance, it's prepaid rent. What do you think if you pay pre if you pay gardening services in advance? It's a long one. How about prepaid gardening services? You can call it whatever it is. You like that? The flexibility in this thing? Right? Okay. So I'm going to debit prepaid gardening <coughs> services. You like that, guys? It's easy, isn't it? $1,000. And I'm going to credit something for $1,000. Well, what did I give them? Cash. It's an asset I have less. Why did I debit the prepaid, by the way? Because it's an asset. And I have more. Why did I credit cash? It's an asset and I have less. Okay? All right. So then what happens in June? They mow the lawn for me and immediately the grass starts growing. So what do I think I have because they mowed the lawn for me and I used it up? As I use things up, I'm incurring costs to generate my revenue, so it is a expense. Well, what do you think you might call that expense? Seeing as it's gardening expense if I pay cash at the same time, what do you think it is if I pay cash in advance? It's gardening expense. It's the same thing. Don't change the names. I'll think you're nuts. Okay? And just imagine what your income statement's going to look like. All kinds of different expenses depending on when they paid for it. Crazy. Nobody do that. Okay? There's just one expense. It's for gardening. Huh? Long mowing, I guess. So what we're going to do is we're going to debit gardening expense, huh? When we did the work. For how much? It's a thousand. Okay. Are we paying for it again? Well, let's hope not, right? I'm not going to pay for it again. Pay for it once. It's not going to be credit cash. What is, what, what is it? What did I do? They owed me gardening. That was the prepaid I had. They had on revenue. I prepaid, right? Now they did it. Do they owe me it anymore? No. Did I use up the prepaid? Yes. I don't have that asset anymore. How do you reduce assets all of <laughs> Credit. Yeah. <laughs> Since you're in here, I have so much fun. <laughs> Which one was that? <laughs> He's doing it for you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, it's an asset you have less, so what do you want to do? Get rid of the asset. Credit, prepaid. I know you guys know what you're doing. <laughs> you can even think the right thing and say the wrong thing. Okay. All right. You got it? Let's talk about what both of those then did to the accounting equation, the balance sheet and income statement. Right, guys? Here we go. There's only six of these. How can there be so much thought involved, huh? There's only six. So once you get these six down, you can account for anything. I mean anything. It's really tough. If you don't get these six down, oh, man, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Okay? Get them. Get them wired. All right. So what did debit, the, the first one, what did debit prepaid the credit cash do? Prepaid was a asset, you had more. What did credit cash do? Decrease the asset. What under liabilities, equity, revenue, expense, right? Nothing. Uh, all that happened was change assets. Is it important to tell your shareholders, though, that you had less cash and more prepaid? Yeah. Okay. So you do. I'd rather have cash than prepaid, didn't you? I can use cash if I need to prepaid. So, all right. Okay, anyway, that's what they did. 
And then what does the next entry do in June? I increase the expense by a thousand, which reduces my net income, which reduces my equity, right guys? Excellent. Okay, and then what else happened? Yeah, I got rid of the free footing, so it goes down. So I've canceled those two assets, haven't I? And what's left? I have less cash and I have more expense. Right? Oh, the two put together. Why did I bother? I don't want the expense until the month I have the expense. I don't want to record the expense in May. I don't have it in May. I don't have it until June. Got it? That's it. Okay. Let's do cash later. So it's June. In June, we did the, uh, or we had the garden again for us, but we're going to pay them later. This is the most common way of doing business, business to business, right? I'm going to pay them later. So they mow the lawn for us and they send us an invoice, and what do we do on June 30th is they mow the lawns in June. So they mowed the lawns for me. I'm having the lawns mowed so that I can increase my revenues, I hope, right? Any, any costs I incur, I'm trying to generate revenue, right? So what do, I, what do I have? An expense, main? Gardening expense, just like that one's gardening expense, this one's gardening expense. It doesn't matter when you pay for it, it matters when you use it up, right? I'm going to debit gardening expense because that's what it is. Great. For the $1,000. And then what am I going to credit, gang? Accounts payable. You got it. You found an open account and now I owe it because it's payable. You put the word receivable on it, you got an asset. You put the word payable on it, you got a liability. Like that? It's simple, huh? Right? Okay. So, and it, well, I wouldn't just say payable because there's all kinds of payable. Okay? I would call it either accounts payable or gardening payable if you want, right? More likely accounts payable. Okay, everybody good? Good. Okay, what did that do, by the way, on the balance sheet and income statement? What do you think that does? Increase the liability accounts payable. Good. Ooh. It's going to decrease equity. How do you know it's decreasing equity? No change to assets. I don't see an asset there. It's gardening expense and accounts payable. Oh, I increased an expense, right? Which does what? Reduces net income, which does what? That's where the reduction of equity comes in. Everybody getting it? Okay, good deal. All right. Then what happens? When was it due? June 10th, wasn't it? Or July 10th, I'm sorry. July 10th, right? Okay, it's due. And we're probably going to pay our bills on time. So what happens? We pay off the cash. Everybody agree with that? Cash is a asset. You have less of it. What do you want to do? Credit it. Good. You see how powerful these debit and credit little rules work for you? You just can't screw up on it. And then debit what? I no longer, yeah, accounts payable because I no longer owe them. It's a liability that goes away, so what do you do to it if it went away? Debit, excellent. Accounts payable. 1,000. Okay. Boy, I'm glad I got through that. Okay. All right, guys. Um, yeah, remind me next time that I didn't tell you which of these were deferrals and which were approvals. Okay. We're going to go through this whole model again next time anyway. But you'll know it by then, won't you? When you read this chapter, you pull this out of it, okay? Know it next time I see you. And, and put it together with what you already do. Nice job on the computer. Keep working hard. Just don't do your other thoughts if you want. You can go to me. I'm a hero. Oh, no problem. I can Well, one of them's going to happen tomorrow. Yes, there has to be one tomorrow. Because there were two scheduled for tomorrow, none for Tuesday. So, yes, tomorrow's meeting is on. Uh, and I think it's Price Waterhouse. And then they're going to try to get Mountain Joy to take the following one Tuesday or the third Tuesday. Yeah, she didn't receive it. Great thing.
Yeah, well, probably. You're going to have to ask about this. Go ahead. Ask for it. Yeah, just go. I don't know if you like it. Uh, Use the Thank you. 